In this video, I answer the question I get most often. What are the essential pots and pans that every kitchen needs? I give you my recommendations on shapes, sizes, and brands. I also share a few pans that aren't essential, but are nice to have as you add to your collection over time. So if you're starting completely from scratch, or you're ready to throw out your old pans and invest in better quality, more functional pieces, keep watching. The first piece that every kitchen needs is a quality stainless steel frying pan, also referred to as a stainless steel skillet. This is your workhorse pan. You can use it for nearly any ingredient and it will last forever. This pan has sloped sides, a long handle, and a large cooking surface. You can use it to sear meats, saute vegetables, shallow fried chicken, and much more. It won't react with acidic ingredients and the fond and brown bits that get stuck to the surface can be deglazed and simmered down into a delicious pan sauce. Look for a fully clad pan that's around three millimeters thick. Fully clad means the pan has a conductive core layer of aluminum or copper throughout the pan, including the sides. The alternative is disc bottom, meaning the pan only has this conductive layer at the base. Fully clad pans are more durable and heat more evenly. I prefer pans with flared rims because they make it easier to pour liquids and slide food onto a plate. Avoid rounded handles as those can rotate in your hand. I recommend a 12 inch pan because it can handle large amounts of food without overcrowding. But if you live alone or don't have the space for it, a 10 inch pan is a good option too. For frying pans and other stainless steel pots and pans I talk about in this video, All Clad, Made In, Heritage Steel, and Demeyer are excellent brands. If you want to save money, Goldilocks, Misen, and Legend are affordable brands that perform well. The next pan you need is a stainless steel saute pan. The difference between a frying pan and a saute pan is that frying pans have sloped sides, and saute pans have straight sides. Because of the taller L-shaped sides, saute pans can handle more volume and liquid heavy meals and do a better job containing splatter. They're great for braising, shallow frying, and of course, sauteing. The downside of the straight sides is that liquid doesn't evaporate as quickly. And since you need the surface of the meat to dry out to get a good crust, searing in a saute pan is less effective than searing in a fry pan. Most come with a lid so you can stuff large amounts of greens like kale in them to steam and cook down. And they usually have a helper handle that makes them easy to pick up and move, even when they're hot and full of food. Saute pans come in several sizes, but I recommend three to four quarts for most people. These sizes are large, but still maneuverable and easy to store. Every kitchen should also have either a stainless steel saucepan or saucier. Saucepans have a flat bottom, straight sides, a narrow opening, and a long handle. Sauciers have a curved bottom, sloped sides, and a wider opening. Both are great for making sauces, pasta, grains, braises, and small batches of soup. Although I use both regularly, I prefer a saucier because the rounded bottom makes stirring, whisking, and cleaning easier. With saucepans, ingredients tend to stay in place, which increases the risk of burning and sticking, and the corners are difficult to clean. I recommend a two, three, or four quart saucepan or saucier. The four quart gives you extra room to avoid overcrowding foods like pasta, but the two-quart version is better for hard-boiled eggs and quick meals like mac and cheese since it boils water faster. Three-quart is a nice balance between the two. One reason you might want to go with a smaller saucepan is because you also need a stock pot. These pots are similar to a saucepan, but they're larger with taller sides, wider openings, and two small handles. This will be the largest pot you buy, and I recommend getting one that's between six and eight quarts. You'll use your stock pot to cook soups, stocks, large quantities of rice, and pasta. You may not use it daily or even weekly, but I still consider it essential. Sooner or later, you'll need to make large quantities of food and cooking multiple batches in a smaller saucepan isn't always practical. Although I recommend fully clad stainless steel cookware in most cases, Stock pots are the one exception where you can get by without it. The circulating liquid helps distribute heat effectively, and food doesn't often directly contact the sides of the pot. So there's less risk of scorching or uneven heating without the clad walls. A 12-inch cast iron skillet is another essential piece of cookware. The main difference between this cast iron skillet and the stainless steel frying pan I mentioned previously is how they heat. Cast iron doesn't heat up as fast or evenly as stainless steel, but due to its thick construction, it has far superior heat retention. It's the ultimate cookware for searing because it can hold temperature stable and not cool down 
when you place a cold piece of meat in it. But you can do much more than searing. You can use this skillet for roasting, sauteing, frying, and even baking cornbread and pizza. To prevent rust, you need to season cast iron occasionally, which involves coating it in a thin layer of oil and baking it in the oven. As layers of seasoning build up over time, the cooking surface becomes slick, which makes it easy to cook eggs without sticking. The main downside is that cast iron doesn't go well with tomatoes, wine, vinegar, and citrus. These acidic ingredients can strip the seasoning and react with the metal, leaving behind a metallic taste in the food. Lodge and Calphalon make good quality and affordable cast iron skillets, but Stargazer is an excellent option if you're willing to spend more. It has a longer handle and a smoother cooking surface than these other brands. Every kitchen should have one 10 or 12 inch nonstick pan to cook eggs. I know I said you can cook eggs in cast iron, but a nonstick pan is by far the easiest and most convenient way to do it. No matter what brand you buy, the nonstick coating will eventually wear out. Food will start to stick and you'll need to replace the pan. That's why I recommend using it exclusively for eggs and keeping the heat on low to medium. If you're concerned about the chemicals in traditional nonstick pans, brands like Caraway and Green Pan have a ceramic-like coating made from silicon dioxide, which is essentially sand. Don't waste money on nonstick saucepans, stock pots, and saute pans. Liquid-based meals don't stick, so there's no reason to buy larger pots and pans with a nonstick coating. And don't spend too much money on a nonstick frying pan because you'll have to replace it eventually. Brands like Misen, Trey Montana, Calphalon, and All Clad Essentials make affordable aluminum nonstick pans that get the job done. A rimmed baking sheet or sheet pan is another essential. It's helpful to have two of these so you can roast multiple foods at once without mixing flavors or overcooking one of them. These pans are great for cooking large quantities of ingredients that need to spread out flat and bake or roast in the oven. For example, pizza, chicken wings, broccoli, potatoes, and squash. You can also use a baking sheet to catch drippings under a cutting board on the lower oven rack under a smaller pan. Go for the half sheet size, which measures about 18 inches by 13 inches. The one inch rims contain ingredients so they don't slide off when you move the food around. These pans are made of either aluminum, steel, aluminized steel, or aluminum with a nonstick coating. I recommend aluminum without the nonstick coating because it heats more evenly than steel and can withstand higher temperatures than nonstick. Plus, it's safe under the broiler. A roasting pan with a rack is only essential if you cook chickens, turkeys, roast beef, ham, and other large meats. Otherwise, you can roast smaller meats in a cast iron skillet, stainless steel frying pan, or rimmed baking sheet. I recommend a 14 to 16 inch roasting pan with three to four inch walls. If the walls are too shallow, juices can splash over the sides. But walls that are too high prevent air from circulating and the food won't cook as evenly. Make sure the roasting pan you buy comes with a rack. The rack allows the heat to circulate so the meat cooks evenly and doesn't stew in its own juices. Enameled cast iron Dutch ovens like this one from Stobe are incredibly versatile. You can use them to make soups, stews, sauces, braises, and even bread. Because they have thick cast iron walls, they retain heat incredibly well. So meatballs, short ribs, chicken thighs, and any other meals that require browning and braising, frying, or low and slow cooking do really well in these pots. Plus the enamel coating is non-reactive so you can cook tomato sauce, chili, and other acidic foods without any issue. You could argue that a Dutch oven is not essential if you own a stock pot, since both are large pots with tall walls, large openings, and lids. But I suggest getting both for the same reasons I recommend buying stainless steel and cast iron skillets. Dutch ovens are heavier and retain heat better than stock pots. Therefore, they are better for browning, searing, braising, slow cooking, and any meals that require a steady temperature for long periods. Plus, the heavy lids do a better job locking in moisture and keeping meals tender. In terms of size, a five to seven quart Dutch oven is ideal for most kitchens. They make round and oval Dutch ovens, but I prefer round because they fit better on standard cooktop burners. I've tested several Dutch ovens and the best brands are Lucruce stove and made in those are the essentials but if you have the space and budget a carbon steel skillet an enameled cast iron brazier a carbon steel wok and a copper skillet are nice to have a carbon steel skillet is the lightweight version of a cast iron skillet 
but owning both isn't necessary. A brazier is like a Dutch oven, but with shorter sides and a wider cooking surface. Woks have tall, sloped sides that prevent splatter and allow you to regulate the heat as you rotate ingredients from the hot bottom up to the cooler sides. Copper skillets heat up rapidly and respond quickly to temperature adjustments, but they're not essential because stainless steel pans can deliver similar results at a much lower cost. If you're ready to start your cookware collection, I'll link to my favorite essential and nice to have pots and pans in the video description. Those are affiliate links, so I'll earn a commission if you click and buy, but at no extra cost to you. If this video was helpful, check out this video where I break down the biggest mistakes people make when buying stainless steel cookware. And don't forget to click the logo to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.